Hello and welcome back to Boring Dead Gaming, where today I'm going to be taking another look at Nightmare Frames. We are in the home of the so-called Sister of Mercy. Her name is Mrs... something or other. I, I can't actually remember what the butler said when he introduced us. Hobson here. Uh, but we're told that she'll be along shortly, so I guess we get a chance to snoop around to her place a little bit. Uh, like, look at this portrait. Is that her? No, it's her sister. She passed away in 45. Try not to mention her, sir. Alan! Mrs. Westmore? Oh, there's no need for formalities. Please, call me Helen. Uh, take the day off, Hobson. Thanks a lot. I'm glad you came. It's a pleasure to have the best horror screenwriter in my house. Are you familiar with my work? I have been fascinated by the genre since I attended the premiere of Universal's Dracula in 31 when I was nine. Since then, I've been interested in everything that has come before and after in horror cinema. But there is something that saddens me that the person who currently best understands the genre's tropes and takes them a step further does not consider himself a horror fan. I was, I guess, when I was young. Corman, Hammer Films. But you've matured, right? I hope that's not what you're implying. Horror films are more than just silly entertainment for teenagers. There is more maturity and complexity in your first foray into the genre, Campfire Psycho, than in Melodies of Heaven. I hope you'll forgive my words, but that movie you hold in such high esteem was full of melodramatic clichés. Anyway, let us first address the matter that has brought you here. Peter Evans, right? You can't understand why a person who apparently has everything would take his own life. Well, he had money, success and health. Money, success and health. Everything we aspire to in this life, right? Money? Oh, he was a spendthrift, Alan. Obelisks in his garden bought from Egypt. Daily parties in his mansion. <laughs> Such a lifestyle is hard to maintain. Success? Well, his last few films performed way below what the studio expected. Shareholders were anxious to get rid of him. As to his health, he was sick. He was a gambling addict. Why did he come to see you? He knew that his days as a star producer were coming to an end, and although he was aware that his life was about to change, he lost a fortune at poker. He even gambled away his mansion. He lost it. He wanted me to restore his status, both professionally and financially, something I can do with a snap of my fingers. I'm rich, Alan. Filthy rich. You may have heard that I own Hollywood, and in a way it's true. I do and undo as I please, but I always ask for something in return. And I had no use for Evans. He was not a seeker. Like all millionaires, he was used to having everyone carry out even the most basic tasks for him. Like you, I guess. Uh, less than you might think. Hobson says I'm always stepping on his toes. Evans was not like us, Alan. Like so many others, in his desperation he turned to me as a last resort. I refused to listen to him, and that rejection was probably what pulled the trigger which blew his head off. But I don't feel guilty about it. Uh, what's a seeker? Well, you, for example. Our mutual friend Glenn had a problem, and in a matter of an hour you solved it. That is a seeker. I was lucky. I knew an actress and a director. A lucky seeker? Oh, what more could I ask for? Come with me. Frankenstein, released in March 1910 and produced by Thomas Alva Edison. It is believed to be lost. The only remaining copy lies in that display case. Price was to rescue Metro Goldwyn Mayer once more, but it was worth it. Let us continue. A blind bargain. 
directed in 1922 by Wallace Worsley and starring Lon Chaney. The original negative was destroyed in 1931 and the last known print was lost in the same fire that destroyed the only copy of 1927's London After Midnight, directed by Todd Browning and played by Lon Chaney. I know it, I have always wanted to watch it. Well, it doesn't live up to his legend, but is the holy grail for horror film collectors, especially for those who don't know about Edward Keller's last film. Edward Keller? You know him, right? Well, of course. I've never felt more uncomfortable in a movie theater. Bloody mind games. Terrifying. A very low budget film that horrified everyone who saw it. George A. Romero has stated that he was influenced by it when making Night of the Living Dead. Even William Friedkin claimed that he tried to live up to it with The Exorcist, but failed. His mastery of the genre was unrivaled. You have that gift too, although Keller was more visceral. His last film, you said. It's my understanding that Bloody Mind Games was the only one he directed. I've always thought it was a shame he didn't make more films. What happened to him? He disappeared. It's well known that after his debut feature film, William Castle bet on him to direct Rosemary's Baby before the studio opted for Roman Polanski. Uh, but he can't find him. What few people know is that in 1970, a young reporter for Variety magazine called his boss to say that he'd stumbled upon him in a small town. He claimed that Keller had shot the scariest film in history. And knowing what he was capable of, that might have been the case. What town was that? No one knows. The reporter never called again. He disappeared too. I want that film, Alan. And I believe you are the right man for the job. Tell me, what would you like in exchange? What does he want? Maybe to just do the work he feels passionate about? I want to write high budget dramas. I can pick up the phone and get studios to fight over anything you may write, even your grocery list, but you need to be more ambitious. Uh, to win an Oscar. An Oscar? Uh, anyone can win one without my intervention. You have a golden opportunity, Alan. Shoot higher. To be rich and famous? Evans was rich and famous and things didn't go so well for him. Go ahead, look inside yourself, and tell me what it is that you desire the most. That one thing you could never get otherwise. I know what you want, Alan. You're trapped in this endless loop. You're unhappy with what you have. You want to be the master of your own life, not a slave to it. You will be. You just have to find that movie. Tell me, do you accept? Helen Westmore offers you everything you've dreamed of since you came to Hollywood. You would rather have earned it on your own merits, but an opportunity like this only comes along once in a lifetime, and only to a select few. Think carefully, Alan. I'll do it. Excellent! But where do I start? Ah, the last clue we have is the missing reporter. But don't bother with Variety, they don't know anything. Try to follow his footsteps and find out how he got to Keller. But how? Well, that is the job of a seeker. I'm sure you will know who to ask. Well, no promises, but I'll try. It's been a pleasure, Alan. I know you'll be back with that film. Well, I'd better get moving. Thank you, Alan. Good luck to you, Seeker. Okay. Where's a good place to start? I mean, I'm thinking maybe the uh, the journalist in Joe's Diner could be a spot. We could try him. I mean, I know he's a TV journalist, but he might know something. Who's this? I'm watching you, Alan. What did I do? Nothing yet, but try not to leave me without another employee, okay? Hi, Karen. New look? Yeah, do you like it? Oh, well, very colourful. It's just like Cindy Lauper wears it in the she Bop music video. I was thinking you looked a bit like Cindy Lauper. Cindy who? Right, I forgot you live on Saturn. I got Vicky a role in a movie. I know. Vicky must be very grateful. The very least you could do after what you said to her. What did I say? Well, you should know. What are you reading? Star Hits, music magazine. Are the articles any good? No idea, I'm just looking at the pictures. John Taylor is such a dreamboat. Yeah, I'm leaving. See you later, Alan. 
Uh, yeah, let's talk to talk to this guy maybe. Mac. Yeah. What do you know about Edward Keller? He directed bloody mind games. What else? Well, it's considered the scariest movie in history. Anything else? Uh, what is this? A quiz? I want to find him. Well, I don't think it's going to be that easy. Just as he came, he left. I know that he'd been in talks with Paramount to shoot Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, well, that's right. But that's all I know, I'm afraid. Uh, that's okay. Okay, that was a dead end. What about Billy? No, let him enjoy his burger. Okay, um, well, there's the guy who made the fanzine. He might know something, but I don't know how to get in touch with him. Unless we just go back, unless he's sitting outside Ruskin Productions again. Or he might be up in um, Christopher's uh, office, potentially, if he's being interviewed. Nope. Well, let's talk to him anyway. Alan, do you want to admire a Sunset Boulevard sign with me? No, thanks. Do you have a moment? Sure. You know anything of us? Do you know anything about Edward Keller? Keller, sure. I do, I do this for a living, it's thanks to people like him. I've always wanted to do something on the level of bloody mind games, and I hope that one day you'll write something that surpasses it. If anyone's capable of doing it, it's you. Do you know where I can find him? No, Alan, I don't. Last I heard from him, he was about to direct Rosemary's Baby. Can you imagine? If I, he had directed it, Polanski's version would look like a Sesame Seed episode in per comparison. So why the interest in Keller? Yeah, just curious. Well, I'm sorry I can't help you. Okay, we'll talk to the guys. We'll talk to everyone until we kind of get a, a lead we can follow. Even this guy. Alan, my favorite screenwriter. How can I help? Do you know anything about Edward Keller? Hmm, that name doesn't sound familiar to me. Was he an actor? No, a director. No idea, sorry. Are you busy? Always am. What do you need? Does the name Edward Keller sound familiar? Edward Keller. Keller. If you give me a minute, I can check the archives. Oh, I doubt he'll be there. He was a horror film director in the 60s. Oh, unfortunately, in that case, I can't help you, Alan. No, that's okay. All right. Nothing particularly helpful there. Where else could we go? Try Glenn, I suppose. Goldberg! Welcome back. Make yourself at home. Mr. Bishop? Goldberg, what can I do for you? Do you know anything about Ed? Edward Keller? Edward Keller? Hmm, I haven't heard from him in a long time. He vanished off the face of the earth. I'm trying to find him. I met him, you know. It was just when he released Bloody Mind Games. Great movie. I suggested he shoot a similar film for Flying Saucer Pictures. <laughs> he would check to be rather rudely, what a... But he had other plans, big ones. He was ambitious, I can't deny that. Look, Goldberg, I know I have a reputation for not being a particularly nice guy. But Keller was in a whole other league. Do you know where I can find him? I have absolutely no idea. But if you want some advice, stay away from him if you do find him. I have an idea for a horror movie. Oh yeah? Tell me, tell me. <laughs> okay, so it's Child's Play, Supernatural Entity. What could that be? Poltergeist, probably? The Heirs, the... Mm, not sure what that refers to. Let me know in the comments if you've got an idea what, what, what that's in reference to. Let's say Children's Play. Children's Play. A serial killer called... Well, I don't know, let's say Curtis Lee Ray is mortally wounded by the police in a toy store while trying to escape, at which time he transfers his spirit to one of the best-selling dolls of that Christmas season. Continue? Some days later, a kid named Randy? Yeah, sure, why not? Randy gets one of those dolls as a Christmas present, specifically the doll that Curtis Lee Ray transferred his spirit onto. And the doll starts killing! Uh, yeah. A dwarf! I'm sorry, what? The doll, it would have to be a dwarf in disguise. I know one. His name is Fred. He's as tall as a six-year-old. He complains that no one gives him any elevated roles. Get it? <laughs> hmm, well, it wouldn't look convincing. I had thought about animatronics. Animatronics? 
Do you know how expensive that is? It's about making me money, not losing it. I don't like it. Another one. Okay, let's work down this list. Supernatural entity. A young couple is tormented at night by a supernatural entity they cannot see. You can't see it? So we don't show it. Let's budget. Ha! I like it. Continue. Well, the gimmick of the film is that everything would be shot on video. Video, huh? Yeah, that's what we do. I like it. I mean, it would be like a home recording. Oh, so this is a paranormal activity, yeah? During the day, the protagonists would record themselves with a handheld camera, and at night they'd mount it on a tripod in their room to capture the entity that's haunting them. And do they screw? What? Do they make love? No, they record themselves while they're sleeping in order to get proof of the entity's existence. They just sleep? Well, yeah, pal, people would be disappointed if there was no action in the home recording of a bedroom. Do you get it? Nah, I'm not convinced. Another one. The heirs. When the matriarch of a family dies, her daughter Annie, a miniature artist. Yeah, I'm getting bored. Another one. Was that that one with the girl from, uh, or the actress from, um... Muriel's Wedding? What was that called? I can't remember now. I think it, I think it was. Uh, the Hostel. A couple of backpackers traveling through Europe looking for easy sex. SEX?! <laughs> now we're talking! Our protagonists arrive at a hotel in a small town in Czechoslovakia where they'll be tortured and- WAIT A MINUTE! Czechoslovakia? Oh, that's too far. What about, uh, hmm... San Pablo? It's been an hour from here. There's seedy hotel hostels and the folks over there are very rough. Uh, well, the strength of the film lies in the fact that the protagonists happen to be in a country they don't know and where they don't speak the language. Well, I'm not moving my ass from L.A. Goldberg. Another one. Don't stop shooting. A team of reporters gets trapped inside a building full of zombies. The whole film will be shot handheld as if simulating a TV recording. That's gonna be Rex, right? Rex, really cool. Again with that? Damn, Goldberg, what's your obsession with a handheld camera? I make video films, but I try not to make them look that way. Another one. Uh, this is, was it Annabelle, the film? Clarabelle. Jack and Leah, Leah are a couple who are expecting their first child. Leah is an avid doll lover, so her husband gifts her the one she's always wanted to have. And the doll starts killing! <laughs> well, not directly. Fred! What? My friend the dwarf! He could dress up as a doll! Uh, it's not necessary. The doll doesn't move. A demon is behind it. I know Fred a movie! If the doll moves, I'll buy the idea! Oh, the film would lose all his punch in that case. No Fred, no movie! Another one. <laughs> the Haunting of Hill House. Uh, the Haunting of the House on the Hill. That one exists already. I suppose you're referring to House on Haunted Hill? I know House on Haunted Hill. That's not the one. You know, what was it called? Eh? The Haunting of Hill House? But the film I'm proposing would be called The Haunting of the House on the Hill, not The Haunting of Hill House. But it could be confused with the one I'm talking about. The House on Haunted Hill is yours, right? No, mine is the haunting of the house on the hill. I got it. I was referring to the haunted hill and the haunted house. Or was it the hill house and the haunted hill? Well, listen, let's just leave it there. I'm starting to get a headache. Another one. Well, what kind of movie are you looking for exactly? Horror and science fiction. You know, ain't not too expensive to shoot though. What does a horror movie need to have for you to be interested in it? Blood and tits. And the science fiction ones? Aliens! In blood and tits. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about something else. I spoke to Helen Westmore. Yeah, she called. She's very happy with you. You made a great impression on her. You could probably achieve what she asked of you without any problems. She knows what to ask and who to ask it of. You're a lucky man. No, that's all. I like doing uh, I like doing his voice, Glenn's voice, but it, um, it takes its toll on my throat a little bit, especially with the two of them talking. Yeah, yeah I saw that quiz. Um, there's the FX guys. They might know. They're really into their horror films, aren't they? What's up, dude? Uh, do you know Edward Keller? Edward Keller, man. He and his work give me the creeps. Why is that? Have you seen his only film? It's from 67, very low budget, and at that time, no other film had such realistic makeup effects. Before Tom Savini came along, no one had seen amputations and decapitations on that level of screen. Of that level on screen. Oh, what's your point? 
Word has it that there was no makeup effects department on that film. What are you saying? Only that the director was present at the premiere and none of the actors attended. None of them have been seen again in any other production. From what I heard, they were not professional actors. It was normal they didn't appear in any other films. Well, that's all I'm saying. I'm looking for Keller. You wouldn't know where I can find him. No fucking clue, dude. He vanished off the face of the earth. Although Wayne is the Keller expert here. Who's Wayne? My partner, man. He's a Keller nut. Just a sec. Wayne? Hey, Wayne, you idiot. Alan Goldberg wants to talk to you about Edward Keller. Dude, you better write something good. We just turned down a contract with New Line Cinema. Cut it out, man. Ask him, tell him about Keller. What do you want to know? Mark here says there were no makeup effects in Bloody Mind Games. Oh yeah, that legend. Bullshit. Kristen Masterson, who played Mary, was in several episodes of Happy Days in like the 1970s. In the movie, they smashed her face. Mark, buddy, you're so gullible. Man, the one in Happy Days is another Christian Masterson. That actress denies having worked with Keller. It's the same one for fuck's sake. Older, but she's the same actress. Oh, not again. We've been through this before. You know, man, Keller had the craziest theory. According to him, an actor should not appear in any more films while he finishes his role. This way you avoid the schizophrenia of seeing the same character in two unrelated stories. That's where that absurd urban legend comes from, Mark. People think he really killed them. <laughs> oh, fuck off. You fuck off. Okay, everybody calm down. I was just curious. What might in fact be true is that, well, word on the street is that they used real corpses for the deaths. According to the crew credits, Keller was in charge of makeup effects. I know the craft, man, and either Keller was a genius or, well, they used real corpses. Tell me about Keller. There's not much else to say about it. Nobody knew about him until he released Bloody Mind Games. It was a very cheap film, yet they touched by the hand of a genius. It was released in only a few theaters and didn't gross much. However, the reviews praised it to no end. Nobody had seen anything like it before. It blended psychological horror with the gimmicky really well. Romero, Friedkin, Polanski, even Hitchcock raved about the film, and a cult following soon began to develop around it. Have you seen it? Yeah, I got to see it as a kid in the cinema. It's a fucking masterpiece. So, Keller, right? He was only seen once at the premiere. He gave a really crazy dissertation about fear. Nobody knew what he was talking about. He left during the screening. He was never seen again. Well, he gave a couple of interviews not long after. Although there is a rumor that the same answers, that the answers were not his. A fake interview, you know? I want to find him. Well, you have your work cut out for you, pal. Nobody knows where he is. They call him the J.D. Salinger of horror. Hell, Salinger is easy to track down. Or is it Salinger? I can't remember how you say that. Although, he will send you for a hike if you do. Has no one been in contact with him? Was he married? Did he have children? Fuck, I've been looking forward to this for months. What are you talking about? Marg, listen carefully, you're gonna shit yourself. Keller had a daughter with his partner, some Kate uh, Kimberly. Ah, oh, whatever. The girl was named Elizabeth, Elizabeth Keller. Something happened to the couple and Keller took charge of her daughter rather unwillingly. Their relationship wasn't very good, so Elizabeth cut ties with him. She took off and changed her name. She's quite popular nowadays. What? We all know her, even our friend Goldberg's insulted her in an interview. Wait a minute. You can't be serious. Eliza? From Eliza's Mansion of Horrors? Bingo. You're fucking, you're fucking with me, right? How do you know that? Tracy told me. Tracy? From Hello, Mary Sue? She had a fling with her. Apparently one night she was feeling down and vented to Tracy. She didn't get along with Keller and woke down on him at the age of 13. If there's anyone who might know more about Keller, it might be Eliza. Although going by the date, she must have flown the nest long before the premiere of Bloody Mind Games. I don't know if she'll be of much help. I can't believe it. What do you know about his last film? Edward Keller's last film, huh? It's a myth, man. A hoax some guy from Variety made up. 
It doesn't exist. There's no record of it in any production company. Out if it really existed. Fuck, I'd give my right arm to see it. I need to speak with Eliza. Where can I find her? I think that video game she's starring in is coming out tomorrow. She's presenting it at a radio shack. I have no idea which one. Tomorrow? What about today? Right now, she must be shooting Eliza's Mansion of Horrors. But I don't know which studio. Sorry, can't help you. Don't worry, you've been very helpful already. I know whom to ask. Keep me posted if Eliza decides to talk to you. Although I really doubt she will, after all the shit you've just talked about her. Oh, well, we'll see if there's any luck. Well, I still have to make 13 feet of intestines. So anything else, man? No, I think that's all. Then I'm off. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks to you, buddy. Wayne is right, dude. Try not to take a dump on the genre in every interview you give. Cool, well, we have a lead. I didn't... Uh, he says he knows who to ask about... Eliza's whereabouts. I don't know who that would be, but I'm guessing... Probably... Um, Pam? Are you busy? Always am. What do you need? Oh. Okay, what about, what about this dude? Alan, my favorite screenwriter. How can I help? No. Maybe Ruskin then? Alan, want a drink? No thanks. Do you have a moment? Sure. Oh. Okay, who else would know? Oh, sure the Pam would know. There's only so many people I've spoken to in the game, right? Glenn Bishop now? Westmore might know. Okay, he doesn't want to go back there before it's all done. Um, we could try the chef? Or Karen? This guy. No, this guy. Hey, Mac. Ah, yeah. Do you know where Eliza's Mansion of Horrors is being shot? Yeah, sure. The show is so popular that MBS has acquired it for this new season. It's being recorded in their studios. I don't know which stage exactly, but my friend John is at the guard booth today. He knows. Tell him you're on there on my behalf and he'll let you in without a problem. Oh, thanks a lot, Mac. I wish I could be there when Eliza smacks you in the face. <laughs> because she's going to, you know. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Cool, well, we've got a new location. <clears throat> Tonight's film is unlike any other you have seen. You will see decapitations, exploding bodies, and gallons of blood. And a sex scene. Which is probably what your parents wouldn't want you to see. At least those were the words of one of the network's executives who almost didn't allow us to broadcast the film. And that's one of the problems with American morality. We can show you how to open the body with a chainsaw, but a thousand and one ways to torture a person. Acts against nature. But if you see a boob, all alarms go off. But I have no doubt that this executive who didn't want you to watch tonight's movie is paying a dominatrix $120 an hour to get whipped right now. Cut. What? So, what do you mean cut? Since when do managers double dip as directors? She can't say that. What can't I say? You're saying Howard Leighton is into BDSM. And isn't that true? Cause it's true. That's precisely why you can't say it. Oh, who cares? I'm sick of that jerk. Use right, Eliza. MBS could cancel our show if you start digging out dirt on the management. 
I can see it with other words. No, for heaven's sake. Bite your tongue. Now, well, let's repeat everything from the top. And you, quiet. So I'm guessing she's based on Elvira. Um, who seemed very much to do this sort of thing back in the 80s. Unbelievable. You've got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. Who are you? Hugh Steinman, Eliza's manager. The same one who sued you for slander of my client. Oh yeah? You not received it yet? Maybe. I don't check the mail much ever since the crazy fans started sending me death threats. Ugh, why do you want Goldberg? I want to talk to Eliza. I very much doubt that she wants to talk to you. I want to ask her about her father. Eliza doesn't talk about her private life, especially not with you. Come on, Hudson, give me a chance. You. You know what? Yeah, this could be interesting. Will you apologize to her? Yeah, no problem with that. Fine. Well, I hope this matter will be settled today. Right now, she's shooting a show. You'll be able to talk to her when she's done. But it'll be after this guy. Who? You know, that one sitting there. He's the president of her fan club in Encino. He's gonna interview her and take a couple of pictures with her. And I hope he does it quickly. He won't stop reminding me that he suffers from chromatic anxiety. I don't know what that is, but I don't want any more delays today. You serious? That kid can wait. No, Goldberg. You can wait. Don't expect me to make things so easy for you after everything that's happened. Take it or leave it. Fine, I'll wait. Great. Fuck. <laughs> Cool, okay, well, I, this chromatic um, anxiety thing, that's got to be to do with these glasses. I don't know quite... Maybe we have to convince him to, that we go ahead of him in the line? Um, let's find out. Um, let's just start looking around at stuff, shall we? Eliza is so popular that New World Pictures offered her to star in a movie. A cheap film of dubious quality, but it helped to further entrench her figure in pop culture. I'm pretty sure that's how Elvira got started. She was in some kind of B-movie and then kind of got a role start fronting like a horror series thing like this. Moving Eliza's figure reveals a box of electrical switches. Okay, it's closed. Now it's open. I see several electric switches. They're all flipped except for one. Uh Okay, no, I okay, no, I've got a I've got a feeling I know what it does. Let's talk to this guy first though, because I think we're gonna mess with him. At the age of 30, Clark Hammond has found in Eliza some kind of new religion. He records all her shows on VHS and catalogues them, collects her merchandise, and he even is the president of her fan club in Encino. Although at the moment it only has two members, him and his mother. How does things, I think I've had with a few of these examined comments is, how, how does Alan Goldberg know this stuff? Um, hi, are you a fan of Eliza too? Oh yes, absolutely. I have all her albums. But she doesn't, uh... Oh, <laughs> I get it. I guess. I need to speak with Eliza. Oh? What about? That's my own business. The problem is that I have to wait for you to finish whatever bit your business is with her. I have to interview her for the Eliza's Encino fan club newsletter. Yeah, well, whatever. Can you tell me, can you tell that guy Hudson or Hugh, whatever, that you'll let me go first? <laughs> I'm sorry, but the shoot is running late and I have to get home as soon as possible. They're waiting for me. Your kids? <laughs> no, I don't have any children. A wife? <laughs> My mother. How old are you, man? Th three? Thirty? Your mother can wait. I don't think she'll worry if you're one or two hours late. You're old enough to not have a curfew. What the hell, you're old enough to be living by yourself. No, n no, my mother might get nervous if I'm late. That upsets her. I, I have to be with her. What do you have there? Where? In your hand. Oh, it's a signed photo of Bella Lugosi. <laughs> it's been in my family for many years. My grandfather was an actor in Romania, you know. Lugosi himself gave it to him when they met at the Actors' Union there. It was founded by Lugosi. Did you know that? Nervous about meeting Eliza? 
<laughs> yes, of course, who wouldn't be? But it's also because of my chromatic anxiety. It flares up when I get nervous. Do you know if there's a hospital nearby? No, forget it, I'm gonna be fine. I... I must calm down. Why did you bring the photo with you? Some kind of lucky charm? I'm gonna give it to Eliza. You're gonna give a family keepsake to a stranger? Eliza's no stranger to me. She's been part of my life for years. Since you want to get rid of the photo, you could make a pretty penny instead of giving it away. Eliza probably won't give a damn about it. She'll toss it in a drawer and forget about it. I do what I want with my stuff, okay? Okay, okay. No need to snap at me like that. I'll be around. Come on, let me go first. No, I can't. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at this. The ashtray is overflowing with cigarette butts. Okay. Well, I think this is going to blind him. And that'll probably upset him. Oh, they're too hot here all of a sudden. The on-off switch appears to be broken. Okay. What happens if we just give him those glasses because the chromatic thing? No? already wearing a pair. I'll talk to him again with the light. Hey, ma'am. Okay, never mind. Let's talk to Lionel. Uh, I'm not here to talk. If you want something, ask you. Oh, this panel. Where do you think you're going? Uh, to take a look at the shoot. Didn't you see the sign? It says they're on the air and the program it no, it says they're on the air and the program's not live. Fancy yourself a smarty pants. No, I'm just Do not interrupt the shoot. Do I have to turn that up somehow? Do I put that on the light? Ah. Oh. Oh no, I knew it. Sooner or later it had to happen to me. Is there a doctor in the house? I need a doctor. There he goes. Where is that guy? He had to go. Why? I have no idea. Yeah, well, better that way. We're running late. Eliza will be with you in a second. Thanks, Hudson. You! Behave yourself, Goldberg. You're Ellen Goldberg, right? Uh, yeah. Ellen Goldberg, the screenwriter? That's me. I know you are, but I wanted to be sure before I did it. Did what? This. <laughs> Shit, that hurt. You know what hurts? For a person you admire to insult you every time he gives an interview. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Ah, oh, fuck that hurts. No, I don't like interviews, Eliza. I usually drink too much beforehand. Yes, well, that explains a lot. One day someone asked me what I thought of you as a horror icon. I remember it quite well. A stripper that used horror to make teenagers horny. Uh, yeah, something like that. Not something like that. Those were literally your words. Yeah, magazines love feuds, and they ask me that question again and again. And when I'm drunk or hungover, I play along. By calling me a slut? Yeah, that is more than just playing along. In fact, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time with a sexist pig like yourself. Eliza, I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I said those words. I tend to be a jerk most of the time. You are. I know I've earned that slap and every other slap you want to give me. I just hope your fans don't follow your lead. What do you mean? I get threats from them every day. Really? I had no idea. Don't worry about it. I don't pay much attention to them. Although I just met one of your fans. He had the same look as Mark David Chapman. I... I can't tell you how sorry I am, Alan. In a way, I feel responsible for it. I have dedicated a, you a few choice words in some of my programs. In one of them, I said that I would like to see you guillotined. 
Those idiots must have taken it seriously. Well, don't feel guilty. It's what I get for being a loudmouth. I'm in the middle of a shoot. I can address them now and get this over with. Ah, uh, don't worry. Shall we call it even? Yeah, sounds good to me. Come, let's sit down. Alright, Alan, I know you didn't come just to apologize. What can I help you with? I would like to talk about your father. My father? Edward Keller. How did you... I guess it doesn't matter. I've spent my whole life trying to hide the fact that I'm that bastard's daughter. And to be honest, you're the last person I feel like talking to about this. Uh, but whatever, go ahead. Just promise me you'll keep it a secret. Of course. Okay, Alan Goldberg. Shoot. Do you know where I could find him? Hopefully rotting in hell. You've had no contact with him? None at all, and as you can see, my life has improved a lot since I don't hear from him. What was he like? There isn't much information about your father. A genius, according to most, but a horrible man in my eyes. He didn't like people, not even his family. The only thing he cared about was his work. His ambition led him to neglect everything in his life that didn't have to do with cinema. I owe nothing to that man except for my love of horror films. It's the only damn thing he ever impressed upon me. Well, I'm looking, f to be honest with you. I don't give a shit about your father. I've been offered something huge if I manage to get my hands on the last film he shot. And I'm hoping I'll be able to find it. Ah, yes, that movie. The holy grail of cast movies. I'm afraid it's nothing more than a legend, and it would not surprise me at all if he had made it up. He enjoyed being the center of attention. He was a very vain person. According to what I've been told, he released bloody mind games and then vanished. Even when the film became a success, he still didn't resurface. He could have taken the opportunity to, as you say, be the center of attention. He was a very complex person, Alan. Don't try to make sense of everything he did or didn't do. Gee, I thought I'd find a clue as to his whereabouts here. I'm sorry I couldn't be of any help, but I'm glad to have talked to you. Even if it was about the uh, this. It seems like you're on the right track towards not being a dick. I try not to be, but I'm not very good at it. Want some advice, Alan Goldberg? Give up your search. Nobody who has stepped into my father's orbit has walked away unscathed. He was a manipulative psychopath. He loved to see people suffer. I think he loved that even more than he did horror movies. He drove my mother crazy, did you know that? I'm sorry. He never laid a hand on her, but he had absolute control over her. My mother was a strong, independent person. No one could explain how she could consent to that kind of relationship with my father. She ended up killing herself. I was 12 when it happened, and he took care of me. I don't know if it was because he didn't want to deal with child protective services, which would have distracted him from filming bloody mind games. I ended up in... Uh, just a moment, I think I have a clue for you. I'm all ears. At that time, around 1966, my father joined the cult. They called themselves the House of the Black Light. Uh, it was just uh, one of the many satanic cults that sprung up in LA when the hippie movement began to fizzle out. They said they worshipped the devil and who knows what else, but all they did was get high on LSD and fuck like rabbits. My father and a couple of other guys were the only ones who took it seriously. I saw him do horrible things to the girls. They probably ended up like my mother. I walked out of there after two months. I had nowhere to go and I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. But anything was better than staying there. The thing is that two months ago there happened to be a report on NBS about new age cults in LA. Uh, there's one called Sigma Omicron, and you know what? They were at the same farm that the House of the Black Light used as their HQ, and they interviewed their leader, some guy named Dan. Now, that guy was already around in the 60s. He might know something about your father. I don't know how much time he spent there, but the leader of Sigma Omicron probably knows more than I do. Where is this farm? Do you know the Lost Canyons Golf Club in Simi Valley? Uh, rings a bell. Is the first farm you come across heading north. Ah. Thank you very much for your help, Eliza. You're welcome. But remember, I have warned you about my father. He's a tornado that swallows up everyone around it. Be careful. Uh, and one more thing. I don't make this program to show off my body. I love horror films, and out there is a whole generation of kids who will be the ones to dignify this genre in the future. My wish is to spark a passion in them for this type of cinema, and hopefully they end up being the next Sam Raimi or John Carpenter. 
or the next Alan Goldberg, because even if it pains you to admit it, you are one of us. I have to go back to the shoot. Take care, Alan. Well, thank you, Eliza. I'm so sorry about it. Yeah, it's, it's all in the past. Done. Okay, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here, so let's head out. Wait here, please. Got a hand. The animal is perched on the fence as if it were the guardian of the place. Can I touch it? For some strange reason, you feel compelled to pet the hen. Ow. You get a well-deserved peck on your fingers. <laughs> Sigma and Omicron, this is definitely the place. The symbols give away that this is a fraternity or indeed a cult. A couple of drums crumbling with rust. Take a look inside the drums and regret it immediately. You don't know exactly what's in them, but it's probably not healthy to keep smelling the stench they give off. Got a little windmill. The blades of the rusty old mill squeak every time the wheel turns. The structure is swaying so much that you're afraid to walk past in case it collapses. The only function the mill serves now is to test how long it will stay standing. <laughs> yeah, we've got a rusty old truck over there. A ramshackle truck sits in the shade of a tree. From the looks of it, you doubt it would even start crosses your mind to search the truck. You don't even know what you'd find in it. Alright, let's go to the house then. Hello? Is anyone there? <coughs> you don't really know what they do here, but it's certainly not cleaning. Dust fills the entire room, stirred by the breeze coming in through the open window in the background. clock looks older than the house. It's 50 minutes late, but you didn't come here to set clocks. Just having a look around at stuff, there's... Not a lot going on, to be honest. There was something over here. Sure. Staircase. Door. Let's go in the door. No one in that room. Dan is on this floor. You don't need to go upstairs. Shit! Who are these guys? What the fuck happened here? Uh, was this a suicide cult? Kind of looks like it. Uh, I guess we should look at the leader. There's no doubt that this guy is Dan, the leader of the cult. You check his pulse. It is way too fast and his heart beats as if it was going to burst out of his chest. And his breathing is becoming more laboured each moment. Wake up! Can you hear me? You get no response. Don't need to carry a dirty sheet around. The letters Sigma and Omicron are painted on a sheet that looks like it could have survived three wars. Guess we should look at these guys. A faint trickle of saliva runs down his mouth. You hear a deep breath and a couple of snores. Are they just sleeping? Drugged? I thought, I thought they were dead. A woman in the mid-twenties is lying on the ground. From her posture, she appears to have slumped over. Her breathing is weak, but she is still alive. On top of the woodworm-riddled furniture, there are several books on UFOlogy. There is a small drawer and a door. Try to open the door, but it's locked. Try to open the door. Drawer. Everything inside looks rusty, except for a pair of scissors in relatively good condition. I'll take those. Okay. Let's hold these trophies. The taxidermist fantasy hanging on the wall shows the animals native to the area, such as the red fox or the gouga. They seem to have been here even before this house was occupied by a group of devil-worshipping hippies. You don't think the taxidermy makes any sense, not even as a type of horror aesthetic. What's this? The handwritten book is a fantasy... Hang on, pardon my dog. Someone went past outside, I think. This handwritten book is a fantasy about a dark lord, flying saucers and planets beyond our galaxy, all sprinkled with a hefty dose of homophobic and racist, racist paragraphs for good measure. There is a yellow piece of paper between its pages. You pick up the paper that was between the pages of the book. It is a list of plants you do not know, accompanied by their corresponding measurements in grams. Something tells you that's what they've taken to end up like this. Cool, well I think I know where we take that. Let's just continue exploring this location first, though. Peek under the hood. This guy appears to be in his late twenties. Right, this one. The boy does not appear to be more than fifteen years old. You wonder what brings someone so young to a place like this. 
All the cultists have gladly accepted a drink of the poison their leader has given them. There's not a drop left in the glasses. The poster art shows a guy delighted to be abducted by a flying saucer with 50s aesthetics. If this sort of thing were real, surely the aliens would not take the people of Sigma Omicron to their planet unless they wanted to study human stupidity. Okay, well, I think what we do is take this to the herbalist guy. Um, we can have a quick look at that. A list of the plants the members of the Sigma Omicron crawl ingested. Yeah, I, maybe they come up with some kind of cure for them. I think that seems like the most obvious play. Where was that place? It was, um, it was Vine Street, wasn't it? <clears throat> Let's try giving the nurse the list. I think you can help me with this recipe of sorts I found. Let's see. Hmm. Where did you get this? Ah, oh, it's a long story, but I think someone threw a party with that stuff. Do you mean they ingested it? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Oh god, wait here. Yes, Rosa? Rosa tries to keep her voice down, but you manage to hear the whole conversation. That one over there. Okay, don't worry, I'll take care of this. How are you? I'm Dr. Ramirez. Alan Goldberg, my pleasure. Well, you, what you have here are the ingredients for what is known as the Big Sleep. Oh, like Bogart's film. Damn right. It's a powerful hallucinogen that was quite popular during the last decade. It was made from uncommon plants found along the US-Mexico border. People stopped using it because one of its side effects was that it slowed the heart rate and caused a state of somnolence that could last for two to three days. Hence the name, I suppose. Exactly. Tell me, how old is the person who ingested it? Mm, there's five of them. Uh-huh. Most of them are kids, I'm guessing they're in their twenties. All except one, a man, he must be, I don't know, sixty-something? Well, you must take that person to the hospital immediately. It was proven that in the elderly, the big sleep slowed down the heart rate even more, after which it would suddenly shoot up at irregular intervals. That can lead to a heart attack. The person you're talking about is in real danger. Can you take him to a hospital? I think that, forget it, it would be too risky. While the drug is working, his heart will be too sensitive to resist a dose of adrenaline, which is what he will be given at the hospital. Unless... Yes, we have time, at least I hope so. However, we can't just sit back and do nothing. You see, there's a partly natural solution that could serve our purpose. I can make it in a matter of minutes, but I'm missing certain elements here. I could get them. You must get them. A person's life depends on them. The first ingredient would be a leaf from the tree of the bamboo family. Bamboo sodiae phargenae. It's a small tree. It doesn't grow more than three feet. Lately, it has become fashionable as a decorative element. Most people are not aware that at this time of the year it gives off toxic spores. It, it is not an indoor tree. One leaf, good. What else? Um... We must restore his heart to his natural rhythm. The adrenaline, as I said, would be too strong. So I can't think of anything else but some instant stimulant. Cocaine. Where will I find cocaine? Are you serious? We're in Hollywood. Is it clear to you what you need to bring me so I can help your friend? A bamboo leaf? Yeah. And cocaine. How much are we talking about? Yeah, not much. Less than half a gram will be enough. Let me notify Rosa. Are you serious about this? I don't like the idea either, but we're here to save lives. Alright. As soon as you get those two ingredients, give them to Rosa and I will get to work. Thank you very much, Doc. If you have any questions, please talk to her. And now, if I may, I have a patient to attend to. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. I feel like someone's mentioned cocaine, but I can't remember who. But I think the good place to, I mean, I know where to get the bamboo leaf, because I was thinking about that as a puzzle solution earlier. Um, oh wait, I know. We need to go to site. Well, this is a bit of a cliche, but... Hey friend, you again. What do you want, man? I, uh, need some cocaine. What do you take me for, man? Do I look like a drug dealer? Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Get out of here, pal. I don't sell that shit. Hey, you with the white, you with the beard. 
Yeah, you, come over here. And Leroy won't sell you shit, because that guy is around. Who? The one leaning on the pole. He's an undercover cop. They think no one can tell, but we can usually spot them a mile away. Just look at the way he's dressed. He thinks he's Don Johnson. What is this guy up to? Torn brownie points, I guess. They're the kind of cops fresh out of the academy that want to move up the ranks at all costs. I know a few of them. I guess catching Leroy suppliers would get some recognition. Is that Cobra planning to stand there all day? All day long. The bastard's got the patience of a saint. Leroy don't look intimidated, though. Look at them. This looks like a staring jewel right out of a spaghetti western. I have to go. Don't you want to have a good time? No thanks. Suit yourself. What if we give him the illegal picks? I'd like to show you. Look, get out of here, will ya? Yeah, alright, I will. As soon as you see this. You know what you're showing me, pervert. They're not mine, they're from a guy on Vine Street who's in the business of taking pictures of naked miners. I was hoping you could teach that degenerate a lesson. What makes you think I'm a cop? Well, either you're watching that dealer or you're in love with him. The author of these photos is a well-known photographer. You could score some points with your superiors by arresting him instead of standing around her all day, staking out a petty drug dealer. Hmm. Can you assure me that these photos are not yours? I think there's something else you're not telling me. What's your name? Christopher Ruskin. All right, Mr. Ruskin, where can I find this bastard? Vine Street. His name is Barry Mitchell. He has a photo studio with a black facade right next door to the 19, number 17 bus stop. You can't miss it. Give me those pictures. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Ruskin. Psst. You do come here. I don't know how you I don't know how you did it, but you just got rid of a royal pain in my ass. You've earned Leroy's respect. You get a 50% discount on all my shit. Let's so make the most of it. What do you need? Cocaine. Cocaine, huh? I should have guessed. You Hollywood types always want the same thing. I can't remember how, much, how I was doing his voice before. How much do you want? Uh, just a bit. Less than half a gram. Less than half a gram? What are you going to do with it? Put it in your coffee? No, oh, whatever, man. It's none of my damn business. Shit. It's Ringo Starr. Mr. Goldberg. Alan Goldberg. Well, that depends. Who are you? You can call me Tom. My boss is aware of your search. He would like you to share everything you've discovered about Edward Keller. If it's alright with you, of course. Wait a minute, how did you know? Would you mind joining me so that we can discuss the matter? All this is starting to give you a bad feeling. Who's your boss? Allow me to omit his name for the time being. He would compensate you financially when you share the information. I would accept if I were you. I don't... I, I don't know what you're talking about. I know what you're, I'm talking about, Mr. Goldberg, and so do you. Look, pal, I don't know what this is all about, but leave me alone, will you? I would like to inform you that he is not used to having his invitations turned down. Do yourself a favor and reconsider the offer. What do you say? No. Is that your answer? The kindest one. All right, as you wish. Have a nice evening. Oh, I'm back. His voice has changed every time. <laughs> Here you go. 15 with a discount. Buy. Fine, 10. <laughs> Great. Hope you, hope you put a good word for me with your Hollywood buddies. I'm here all day. Tell them to ask for Leroy. Thanks, Leroy. Okay, time to get that bamboo plant. Let's go trim a bamboo plant. Now we have the scissors as we know. Alan, you're always welcome here. Snip, snip. What are you doing? Taking a souvenir. You are disturbing the feng shui of the office. Relief, really? Do what you want, but if things go wrong, I'll know who to blame. Okay, so we take these to... Was it, Vine? was it Vine Street? I think it was Vine Street. Back 
to the doctors. Hey Rosa, have some drugs. Here you go. Rosa takes the bag of cocaine with a shudder and gives you a disapproving glance. All that's missing is the other ingredient, the bamboo leaf. Which I also have. Here you are. Good, thank you. Did, Doc, did Mr. Goldberg bring the ingredients? Yep, here they are. Excellent, I will start working on it. Hey, young man, come over here. <clears throat> I noticed you gave Rosa a bag with some powder. Is it good for bone pain? Um, get me a little bag of that. How do you take it? Do you dissolve it in water like an infusion? Mr. Goldberg? You'll excuse me, I need to speak with the doctor. The mixture is ready. Do you know how to give an injection? No, but I don't think it'll be too hard. First purge the syringe to make sure there's no air in it. Then press on the arm so that the vein becomes visible. And then I stick the needle in it. Damn right. I recommend that you take your friend to the hospital for a full checkup after this. Here you go. There's no time. Go to your friend. Thanks, Doc. How much do I owe you? Go talk to... Nah, it doesn't matter. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to work. Let's go! Off to the farm. I guess I, I guess I clicked on him by accident. But anyway, stabby stab. <clears throat> are we there yet? Or are we in another galaxy? Sort of. This is Los Angeles. Los Angeles? This is a test, isn't it? You are the Dark Lord's envoy, and we're not at the old farm. When I pass the test, the true reality will be revealed, won't it? I'm afraid not. I don't know what kind of shit you took, but you only fell asleep. And in your case, on the verge of death. It didn't work! Oh, damn it! I will try again. Who, who are you? My name is Alan Goldberg. Would you like to join Sigma Omicron, Alan Goldberg? No thanks, I would like to stay alive. Uh, but what are you doing here, then? Only Sigma Omicron members are allowed here. What am I doing here? Saving your life, you ungrateful bastard. Although I actually came to ask you about Edward Keller. Edward Keller? Hmm? That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. A long time. You knew him, didn't you? I didn't really get to know him very much. Joseph and Brian brought him to the commune. We used to worship Satan. Well, more like the three of them. The rest of us were more into free love and getting high on drugs. <laughs> we call ourselves the House of the Black Light. It was the 60s, you know. What happened to him? I'm trying to find Keller. I don't know, man. Like I told you, I didn't know the guy very well. I don't want to get too close to him either. During the short time he was here, some weird things happened. What kind of stuff? He was a strange guy, much more so than the rest of us. He only spoke to Joseph and Brian. When he addressed others, he did so with contempt. He treated girls like shit. Oh, but that's not the worst part. Once he brought a book. That, that fucking book. Keller gathered us all together and began to read. To tell you the truth, I don't know exactly what happened at that time. My head was not you know, working well. I was high all day long, even more so that night. The thing is, as he was reading, people started to get nervous. Paul had a heart attack. Mike and Sandra shouted that they were somewhere else. And poor Mia. Fuck, she tried to rip her eyes out. All because of a book? It was no ordinary book. After that, everybody left the house at the Black Light. Keller left, and Joseph and Brian set up that business. What business? Oh, fuck, man. The Church of the Mother Earth. Wait a minute. 
Joseph and Brian? You mean Joseph de Simone and Brian Kinneman? Well, who else? The Founding Fathers. Yeah, what a pair of scammers. They used to talk about setting up something similar when they were here. If anyone can tell you about Keller, it's them. They were always together. I think I'll pay them a visit. I highly doubt we'll be able to talk to them. They're unreachable. Not just anyone can go in there. I'll think, I'll think of something. I'm leaving. Do these kids a favor and wake them up. And be careful if, if I were them, I'd punch you as soon as I open my eyes. Wake up, slackers! We've got a trip to make! Los Angeles is a city full of freaks, for sure. But the ones in there are not just eccentric, they're also dangerous. You decide to do something about it. To the headquarters of the Church of Mother Earth, please. But first, take me to the nearest police station. They need to see what happened there. <laughs> that looks like... So in, um... I mean, I'm not that familiar with, um... The architecture of Los Angeles or anything, but in, I know in GTA 5 there's a, there's a cult headquarters that looks very much like this building, so I'm guessing that, <laughs> that is, they're both based on something uh, real. But that feels like a pretty good place to leave it for now, I think, so um, yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll come back into the cult building next time, but I'll just say thanks very much for watching this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you could hit that thumbs up button, that is always very much appreciated, and every bit of interaction with the videos just helps the channel to get noticed and to grow, uh, which is also very appreciated. So, uh, any comments you feel like leaving as well, I'd happily read those, and it's always great to hear your thoughts on the games that I'm playing. And if you're watching this and haven't yet subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing if you could do that too. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.